Okay, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Mike Rexworthy. I'm um, wearing my Regenerate hat this afternoon. I'll tell you a little bit more about my other hat probably in this talk. So, regenerative medicines, looking at the future. So I thought I wanted to start with a, a definition. So regenerative medicine is the um, replaces or regenerates uh, human cells, tissues or organs to restore or establish normal function. And that's the becoming the accepted definition now. Uh, that's, that's Chris Mason, Peter Dunnell's definition. Um, I have added the, the rider at the bottom though, because people think it's just stem cells. It's not just stem cells. We're talking about uh, the means of expanding those cells uh, by uh, bioprocessing, means of delivering them, tracking them, working out where they've gone. Uh, involves scaffolds or uh, biomaterials to, to deliver. It involves bioactive agents to, to mobilize and uh, enhance the effect. Uh, and many other technologies. Uh, what's Regenerate? Just briefly, I'll tell you what Regenerate is. Um, this is a partnership between the leading eight in research intensive universities in the north of England, those shown at the bottom of this slide, and um, a partnership between those universities, uh, industry in regenerative medicine, largely in the north of England, and clinicians, again, largely in the north of England. And we're focused on developing um, industry relevant technologies for regenerative medicine. Uh, we're a network, um, we conduct a lot of brokerage in bringing uh, industry and, and academics together to do that. We're also keen to develop uh, an awareness of the translational barriers uh, among um, basic researchers. So this is um, technologies for regenerative therapies. So what I want to show you and uh, um, another pointer is the one. What I want to show you is more than just um, materials, more than just, not great, right, okay. Okay, it's more than just um, scaffolds, it's more than just stem cells, it's more than just uh, the molecular side. Uh, if we're just talking about one of those, we can talk about medical technologies, biomaterials, bioscience, uh, biotech, uh, the molecular side. Bringing those together here, into the in, into this uh, this triangle is, is a complex business, and then brings us into these other areas here: processing, manufacturing, um, cell selection, delivery. But this on this side, we're talking predominantly about the device regulation. On this side, we're bringing things together. We're talking predominantly about uh, pharma regulations for advanced therapies. So a complicated um, scenario. Uh, you may have seen this before. This is the uh, the Gartner's Gartner's curve hype cycle of emerging technologies. So, so here we have the, the technology trigger, um, the um, peak of inflated expectations down here by the, the trough of disillusionment, back up again, eventually enlightenment and this plateau of productivity. Now I borrowed this from um, Paul Kemp at Intercytex, who borrowed it from uh, this guy, uh, Proteus Greg uh, Bonfiglio. So uh, much borrowed slide. And if you plot things going on in regenerative medicine, you get this kind of thing. So I'm not going to take you through every part of this, just a couple of, a couple of things here. So um, first FDA approved product here in, uh, in 97. Um, first tissue engineering product approval, that's Aplograph in 99. Um, I'll tell you about Dermograph because that's part of my background in 2001, approved there. Up here at the peak, um, 73 firms, 3,300 3, 3, jobs, market cap of 2.5 billion, and they were down here. And um, this guy's got something to do with that, so it is said. So this partial ban on um, human embryonic stem cells in uh, 2001 brings it down here. So um, organogenesis and ATS, industry leaders at the time in tissue engineering, both filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy here in 2002, so right at the bottom here. Uh, rising up here, a couple of things probably worth pointing out. Um, 2003, UK stem cell um, bank set up. 2005, the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine set up. Um, Aplograph survives, 200,000 patients treated by 2007. Um, Obama elected, and in 2009, that partial ban being um, removed. In terms of the importance, this is an important industry, an emerging industry. Um, 
Here we have some key metrics, 3.6 billion uh, market in 2005. It is predicted to be 118 billion by 2013. Uh, growth rate of 16%, so a major market. Uh, dramatic revenue growth as well, 130 billion in 2001, 1.5 billion in 2007. Plenty of uh, clinical programs, plenty of commercial products in development. 1.2 million patients treated with, with regenerative therapies. And um, another indicator really of the importance of the industry, these are patent applications relating to regenerative medicine from 96 to 2009. And you can see this is a lagging indicator, of course, the patents filed, we'll, we'll, we'll see a product possibly coming from that in um, eight, 10 years time, certainly more than five or six. Okay, in terms of the barriers, uh, we've, we've touched on this already really, um, the demographic change, so a growing elderly population, number of working people supporting um, those retired increasing dramatically and that's falling from four to two over the next 50 odd years. Um, new clinical challenges because of new uh, diseases of people living longer and wanting to stay active longer. Chronic dis diseases, um, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, we've touched on those. Aging baby boomers don't want to uh, have a, a quiet retirement but they want to do the things that they were doing before implants um, to last longer, and the squeeze on healthcare budgets globally, desire for better, but cheaper. Barriers really, it's a complex regulatory route. This is really going through a pharma regulatory route. So there's no real um, regenerative medicine route. So it's a, it's a hybrid really, but mostly pharma.